the grimoire. Nailed it. Familiar Hello. killers Every... open its pages once more. Steve, what hold on. Page are I'm gonna... from today. Hold on a second. I want you to actually do that for real, but I have to intro what the situation is. My name is Jason. That's what I was doing. That's why I was doing that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys about who your guest who your guest is today. It's Mark. Mark, I didn't catch your I last see name. on this page. It's uh, Norman Keller. It's quite long. Okay. And the then box. your hosts for tonight. <laughs> your hosts for today are myself, Kayla, and Steven. But your main event host tonight is, of course, Steve. Let's get to it. What are we doing? What are we talking about this week? Oh, the grimoire, the pages, they smell, they smell old and good. But we do have a name signed at the bottom this week, a name unfamiliar to us. Nordman Keller. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do, Jason, and you interrupted it, you fucking prick. I did it. You know how the intro <laughs> goes? You, I did it the same way every week. I you should just let me do what I was doing, man. Okay. Anyway, it's fine. Um, this Steve, week, are you on an iPad right now? I am, yeah. I don't have my computer, obviously, because I'm at my parents' house, but... Oh, cool. Yeah, it's fine. I, I think I sound okay. I don't know. I can't see or hear myself, but... I can you hear sound... you just and see it just fine. You sound good. Anyway, um, this week... We are opening the pages of the grimoire one last time because we've been doing it all month. Why? Because we're sick. We're twisted. We're perverted. But we needed to do it one last time to open the pages to Halloween 3, the season of the witch. Is there a witch in this movie? Or I don't think so. <laughs> but maybe, There's a mask. Maybe you could consider something a witch. I don't know. Druids are witch? like witches, I guess. Witchcraft. Witchcraft, yeah. Witchcraft. Is this movie? Sci- is this the movie, The Origin of Scientology? <laughs> yeah. Didn't you see Zeno at the end? He came <laughs> down from space, and we all saw him dumping a bunch of fucking spirits into a volcano. <laughs> um. So, Mark, what we usually do is we go around the circle and we tell a tale of the first time that we saw this movie. And I almost 100% think that I, the first time I saw this was with you because we had that stint in like our teen years where we're like, let's watch all the Freddies, let's watch all the Jasons, and let's watch all the Halloween. I'm pretty sure you were there for all of it. Definitely was. (laughs) So, how about we start with you? When is the first time that you saw Halloween 3, the season of The Witch? Me? Uh, Yes. You was like, yes. Uh, it was you and me and uh, our other buddy, Durak. And uh, we were over, yeah, just like in your basement. And you were like, we got to keep watching them. And I was like, okay. <laughs> There's think- nine more. <laughs> There's like nine more, guys. Come on. Yeah, we watched that one. Um, yeah, and you like, it's like where we watched like all the movies, like in your basement and like uh, in his like bedroom. So it's like beds off to the side and there's like this long sort of room that you'd sit in. And we'd like lay out sort of and watch it. And like, um, obviously the first time you watch it, you know, even as like a younger teenager, like it's, it's a lot. Uh, like let's say your brain's not like as developed, let's say. So you're like, it's a lot more <laughs> impactful. <laughs> and nowadays you can be like, hmm, maybe some of this doesn't make quite as much sense. This you're seems like, oh, like right for- <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, robots everywhere. That could be crazy. And like, I just remember, um, you know, I got later and later. And um, as we did it, you know, we just kind of got like quieter and quieter, kind of like focusing more on it because, you know, at first you just started like making jokes like you always do when you start watching movies with your friends. And then like as you're progressing, you're like, well, this movie's actually like quite I'm good. In, I'm, you know? I'm kind of into this. Yeah. And then so like before you know it, like you're getting into sort of the apex of the movie and like nobody's talking and everybody's sort of glued to it. Um, like so most movies. You're like, oh, my God. And uh, yeah, that was like, I just remember that being like the first memory being like, it's one of those movies that I get really quiet, that you get like really quiet with your friends with, which like, you know, if it's not a good movie, it's getting torn to shreds, like absolutely <laughs> shreds for the whole entirety of the movie. And so, um, yeah, that was like the first time again, I watched it with Steve. So it was, uh, it's pretty good to be here to talk about it. Cause it's pretty fun. That's 
that's a good good way to uh kind of like report is like if you get quiet during the movie it means it's a good yeah that's 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 accurate measuring talking the whole time it's a piece of shit if you're talk if you're not talking it's it's maybe pretty good (laughs) and if nobody's uh, talked the whole time it's like amazing (laughs) yeah jason you're next how old were you guys when you were doing that probably like 14 maybe 15 yeah okay we were young i that was um, a good intro story i liked it i watched it uh technically for the first time today me and steve well we were both just independently watching it we realized we're at the exact same point so we jumped on an xbox live we were like with five minutes of each other where i was like wait a minute did did she just say suck my dick and he was like yeah she just (laughs) said suck your one titty yeah. Um, but we, yeah, we hopped on and watched the end. We watched it like the, the, the hour, the last hour. Um, so that was the first time I've seen it, but I did, I was sort of familiar with this movie because this is one of those ones that like YouTube movie reviewers will like bring up because it's such a far departure from it's a the strange first, for, for the first two Halloween yeah. movies, you know, but the thing is, is they always put it in the same, the same area of bad movies which i fully don't think this is a bad movie it's a john carpenter movie so it's weird it's weird but it's not bad um but people yeah. always compare it to like troll 2 which is legitimately like a shitty Wait, who compares it to troll 2 <laughs> who i've seen it i've seen people put it in that same vein of like bad shitty horror movies um but i think that people didn't go into it with the right lens and since we're so close to john carpenter because john carpenter is a a, a a person that we've done We've done like eight of his direct movies, and then we've done the original Halloween, and and Halloween Two is sort of tangentially his thing. He's credited but not credited. He's like yeah. credited as like a ghost. It's like but John then this he's, existed on this set. He's just he's like got a producer credit, but there's pictures of him on online helping create the music. It's yeah. shot like a John. He's also like movie. looking through camera lenses, and you're like, you yeah, directed you directed this too, you <laughs> fucking weirdo. Anyway, it's uh yeah, that my first time watching it was today, but I was familiar with it. I just didn't realize that it was a kind of a banger. Kind of a good, weird kind of great. Yeah, it's like it. it's more right. of a Did mystery. Anyone look up the director? Was it a pseudonym? Oh. oh actually. God. The way you said that, Kalen. <laughs> you said it like almost wrong? like you're explaining what it is. No, it's not that you said it wrong. <laughs> you just said it like you're explaining what it is. You know, like a pseudonym? <laughs> It's his like pseudo, name. pseudo name. It's, pseudo name. <laughs> it's not a name, but it's like a pseudo name. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I don't think that he used a pseudo name <laughs> for this movie. No, uh, the, the director's name is David Gordon Green. That sounds like a pseudo name. But there's <laughs> a picture of this guy. There's a picture of this man. So unless he was wearing, maybe this, it's a pseudo picture. The pseudo- <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Wait, his wait the direct wait what? It just shows the wrong director here, and then it was actually directed I by. I feel so bad right now because I Mark. I usually have like every Wikipedia page open where I can just like be like, actually, this is the real information. <laughs> <laughs> right now, like I don't have it open, and I feel crippled. It hurts. <laughs> and now we're relying on Jason <laughs> using a fucking phone to look it up. Listen, no, no. he's typing on a keyboard. I don't yeah. have my other. I don't have my other computer anymore because we. Well, why don't we, we just go blind and not worry about that shit? Okay. Just, yeah. Go. No facts. No All facts. Feel- yeah. All feel- Kalen, Kalen, what? When was the first time that you saw Halloween Three: The Season of the Witch? The Season of the Witch. So this will be a little bit of a regurgitation uh, from our previous uh, grimoire episodes, but basically around two years ago, uh, you know, during COVID, I decided to take the plunge and check out all of the classic horror movies, only to find a lot of them are really comedies. But uh, watch, so I saw this one two years ago. I remember, so... Jason, I agree with what you said, and I'll touch on it more when we get to like our outro. But I had the same predisposition uh, of of what to expect, and then it wasn't, and then it it unfortunately did a disservice where I couldn't enjoy it as much as 
it's worth enjoying because it actually is a good movie. Um, I watched it on Sunday uh, a couple of nights ago. And for some reason, I forgot about the ending. So that almost kind of felt like the uh, first time, like it felt fresh. And I also knew that it wasn't another Michael Myers. So like I could kind of not have that I assumption. I was picturing Kalen watching the end of the movie and a guy screaming like, ah! <laughs> and then Kalen would be like, ah! and then it ends. He's like, wow. It's <laughs> <laughs> <is> a movie. <laughs> was there a car crash? Or uh, no, he just screams. There was a car chase and an explosion. Yeah, but he just screams at the screen. Yeah. At <laughs> the end, he just yeah. screams. <laughs> Looking oh, right into the lens. You got us. What's the car chase? The when the guys, the mystery men, are looking for the first guy, the father guy. Oh. I mean, it's not a chase. Like it's not a fast chase, but they're looking All for right. him in a car. Tracks, Kalen. They're what yeah. They're in a tiny please? little white car and he's hiding <laughs> behind a fence like yeah. they'll never see me but you can clearly see him and he's like you'll never see me and they <laughs> drive right by him and you're like mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Kaylin, Kaylin, Trax what's, just give us the 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 the, the business of when you saw it, come on I did it, you two years it. ago and then the other night it so you're done like then. Right. yeah, it's now it's your done. turn or whatever, I just you do make you. sure you were done you know, well thank you, I appreciate that <laughs> I mean, my story is just a repeat of Mark's story, but I do want <laughs> to make it important for our podcast that we acknowledge friends like Mark, like <laughs> an old friend, you know, like someone that I've known like my whole 20 years ago. But like Mark is one of the reasons that I did decide to watch all these movies in like one evening, you know, we would we would sit there and we would be like, let's watch all nine Freddy <laughs> movies, <laughs> and we would yeah. we would do it. I yeah. remember watching the Jason X for the first time at Mark's house, and we we all like sat on the couches with our like hands across our, over our chests, and we're like, this is gonna be scary. And then we watched it, and then we realized it's not scary. It's the it's goofiest a, shit ever. One, one of the funniest <laughs> movies I've ever seen. Like a nano machine, Jason. Um, so I do think that these movies are also like you know they're not necessarily something that we need to like sit here and talk about to be important in terms of cinema, but they are important in terms of like making somebody that you love love you more because you can sit there and be like i loved watching this with mark like that's <laughs> why mark is here right like that's what i love about it and then you got to do that again today with me steve that's true jason i do minus the love stuff with you as no, well he was and like i hate you, stuff with you as well but mark <laughs> is one of my oldest pals and i just i was really excited for him to be here so i'm glad he's here um, Thanks. But Thank you. Thanks the first time that I saw this movie was at my house, like Mark said, in the basement, like he said, in uh, my room, which was like a weird long room. Remember, my room was like long, like it was, was like skinny? super long. And then there was like couches that you could like sit on, and we're like, how do we share this? And like, it's <laughs> like some people had to like sit on the floor, and other people had to, you know, like sit on the actual couch. Um. And we didn't care so much about Michael Myers in terms of, of like, the lore, right? Like, I, I think we liked Jason, we liked Freddy, we liked Chucky, mm-hmm. but we didn't really care about Michael Myers. And this movie just made it okay to not give a shit about Michael Myers, because you're like, oh, you can just make <laughs> another <laughs> Halloween movie without him, and it's actually yeah. maybe better. Like, it's maybe better than the other two Halloween movies. These, this is another situation where the movies are getting seem to be getting better. Like, uh, pretty much every like other it. series we've done. Because this one I liked better than two, and I've loved two way better mm-hmm. than the first. I don't, well, I, I, I won't here's the thing about me, Mark. I don't the other... like the first Halloween movie, and I, <laughs> I know that makes me a plebeian, but, like, I found it to be extremely unscary, but also uneventful when I watched it two years ago. I'm going to give it another chance down the road. I think that I gave did a disservice the way that I watched it. It was like daytime and I was super tired. Oh, but, yeah, but when these, you and Maddie have a little kid. 
and you want to freak that kid out. You that, know it would freak out a little kid, I'm <laughs> sure. If you showed the first Halloween movie to like an eight year old sure. or a six year old, yeah. they'd be traumatized. They'd be like, you might be able to, you might be able to he, his eyeball enjoy that sick. trauma though. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That like, hit me really in a really weird way. Was, yeah. At first, I was like, "That's you funny," and then I want to like, artificially create trauma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> daddy, daddy, remember the when you made me watch the Friday? Like, when the I was a child, my dad floated in the air and he said, "I come from hell." <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? And you realize you just watched Evil Dead One. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's what you were telling me earlier. Steve. Also, you remember. You saw Ghostbusters and Evil Dead around the same time, and one is a pretty like light comedy. Not like... around the same time, like in the same day. Yeah, and the other one is Evil Dead One. I don't yeah. even know if I've talked to you about this, Mark. But I I saw Evil Dead One and Ghostbusters Two in the same day for the first time, and in my brain they became one movie, nice. and I was so scared. Like it was, I was terrified of both of them because they were one movie. The and flying, then, the flying Stay Puft man with yeah. like a giant knife. Well, yeah, and he's like, ah, 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 ah. Uh, it's to be you. fair, Ghostbusters Two does have the Scolari brothers, which did kind of freak me out as a kid. But then you see them the second it's time. The Scolari brothers. brothers. It's the Scolari brother. brothers. I just love the part. Bigo face. On, yeah, uh, yeah. One of my favorite. Yeah. Right. Right. Anyway, so the beginning of this movie. Yo, Sorry. another shout out to the to the jack o' lantern as the first two movies, but in its own way. I thought yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I feel like Kalen can post this episode. He knows what's going on. Um, I like everything about this movie up <laughs> until that moment. like that first beginning moment is like the it's the most John Carpentery shit I've ever seen. Where it's oh, like. A it's John Carpenter music. Yeah. There's no like, there's no getting around the fact that the score, this movie was scored by John Carpenter. I refuse to believe, I refuse to believe that he didn't just fully have his fingers in all of the all of the pots, but especially the music. He's just it's leaning just, over somebody's shoulder. Yeah, like <laughs> no, press this. That's press what we're next. Looking, he keeps looking his fingers. He's like, oh, <laughs> well, I, and you don't even like that. Yeah, <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. But in this, I love it. Um, <laughs> I I do think that he got a little bit more involved for this, and I do know that he got a little bit more involved for this. So he didn't. He never wanted uh, Halloween to be a an anthology series. He didn't want it to be like sequel after sequel after sequel. And so he came back for this one in a bigger way than he did for the second one. He did ghost direct the first one, and he did do the music for the the second one. But in this one, he pretty much did everything. Where he's like, what we need to do is fuck Michael Myers. Fuck him. He's gone. Get him. He got shot. He's dead. Nobody cares about him anyway. Druids. Druid. Druidic magic. (laughs) And he went hard on the druidic magic. People start talking about the Loch Ness monster. There's Irish people. It's Irish town. People are getting Stonehenge. Literally a piece of Stonehenge. Yeah, Yeah. which was like suspected to be a place where druids did different seances and different sun worshiping. Remember, but I I did not remember any of this. I I just remember I. I mostly remembered the pumpkin head with the snake coming out of the eye and the bugs. Like, that's pretty much all I really remember. I remember like, the kid getting killed. That I was just remember thing robots and, like, all this crazy shit. They like, killed a kid! They don't have to kill yeah, a kid! They, they never kill a kid. kid. So. Yeah, but that kid Robot. ripped his mom off, so... Yeah. No, it was his dad, and his dad was like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. No, 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 when they get to the motel, he drives off on his bike, his mom's like, yeah, don't yeah. go. Oh, yeah, play. but it's yeah, crazy. He's like, he's like <laughs> yeah. Don't go in the road, Junior! I called them the RV family, and boy, were they, they were. <laughs> they were definitely an RV family. The dad yeah. reminded me of uh, Randy Quaid's character from the Vacation movies, and the mom oh, yeah. was one of the most unhinged characters i've ever seen anywhere <laughs> they didn't so, even uh, this is, so this is the moment where i i i see this movie and like 
you know, they come into the, the hotel and they seem safe, right? And then all of a sudden, there's like fucking 10 families that yeah. just show up, like at the same time. Where you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, there's, there's too many people. <laughs> Sorry, this is Steve. Crazy. Steve, yeah. um, Mark was, Mark, are you? Did oh, you don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure we move didn't... forward. Well, okay. I, I want to, I want to ask you guys a question. If you could add a family or like a person that shows up to the hotel, what is the, the person or family that you would add and, and how would it add to the dynamic of the situation? You know, there were no, like, there were no teens there were no like teens hanging out who like knew a little bit more than the adults does a bus full of teens show up like or just like the locals just like the local teens who like know a little bit more than the adults you know they give kind of like the hobo character the 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 unhoused character maybe wasn't really like we heard that michael myers killed everyone here but apparently not but also have you guys heard about druidic magic yeah i guess i wanted to keep that teen (laughs) trope out though right like Teens are always there. True. So, True. but so I can want, see why. Yeah, the teens were missing. That would be you want a whole bus of teens, or Jason, or like just like yeah, like oh, maybe like a pair of teens. You know, like the the like the, the couple who go yeah. get a room. Yeah. 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 But then, the, but then they become the heroes. If it's just a couple, it has to be a whole bus. Well, or the team a soccer couple who just gets smoked. The teen, unfortunately, in this was uh, the doctor's like new girlfriend, his mistress. Yeah. Like, yeah. what the fuck was that? Well, she's a robot, but so. she turned out to be a robot. Yeah. Turns out she's a sex bot. Was she fact. a robot the whole time, or did they change? Her? Or did they switch? Around? I think she was. Like, she shows up out of nowhere. Like, look at her pattern, right? Like, so like she shows up out of nowhere, right? Is like, yeah, let's go looking, and I know where to go. We go over this place, and then like she's just like no grief is like, hey. So who? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, the sex was pretty quick. (laughs) It's all. It's right there. She's known him for like you know six hours. They did a good trip across you know part of California, I guess. And boom, it's on. No grief. See no grief about her father at this point. And it wasn't. She sees the car. That's the only time she reacts about her father the whole time. My dad's car. The rest (laughs) of it. No focus on the thing where they played up like. the right. relationship between the do- what the fuck is the main character's name like James or Doctor Daniel Chalice? Daniel. I think. They they Chalice? show Daniel with his Chalice. family. They show Daniel with so. his family. The kids the kids are like fine. They're a little shitty. the The wife is a little naggy, but it's not played up like he's got the shit the worst family ever. He's a busy no, doctor. It's played like he's an alcoholic who flirts with others, and that's why she left him. All okay. right, Kalen. That's good insight. You- he, he drops a mean butt grab, like yeah, first, oh, immediately like, like, within like the first like five minutes. Yeah, mean one to the I nurse. Fully yes, he wants to hog that ass. Yeah, he should have married uh, her. Yeah. Apparently, the nurse at the beginning. He just goes ahead and bang, just grabs it, and then she's like, "Oh, you!" And he's just like, "Yeah, that's what I like," and like or <laughs> something like that. All something the like, I'm a doctor. Actually, worry, so my doctor. answer, Steve, to your question is actually in response to. To what Mark's saying here about about uh, the, about Doctor Dan's uh, character, I'm thinking maybe another doctor or maybe a lawyer that also has some sort of way about him where people just fawn over him, and then he be, he creates kind of like a hey, I'm supposed to be the main guy, and you're trying to steal my spotlight. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, so Jason got a bus full of teens. Not a bus full, the local teens, like four, <laughs> maybe two. Like Jason Mark's had team. every teenager in the whole village showed up. And no, then but it, what had... I will say is, like, la- when we did Friday the 13th, or uh, sorry, when we did um, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 last week, that movie was like very much a th- movie with a lot of teens or young 20s, but was played like more like a Hellraiser kind of a movie, like an adult horror. But this one is a full on like adult horror. But the thing is, is it's not really horrific. No, it's about the guy. It's about the man. It's a mi- it's, it's a, a mystery man. It's a mystery movie with horror elements town. with yeah. with um spooky John Carpenterisms. The only time that I'm actually like that's horrific are like when they when the robots get like stabbed and they like spit up that blood or like yeah. the, the bugs and the snakes. And the, the main thing that has stuck with me is the implication is that. Is it <laughs> marmalade? What is that? I've, 
I don't know. Uh, at the beginning, when oh. the guy gets strangled and he's in the hospital, then they send the assassin, who Steve will tell you who's, who's played by that in a second. Um, they imply that when he's putting his fingers into the guy's face to like, I was like, why is he stabbing in the eyes? Later, they talk about what actually happened there, and he split his head open like a pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Like that, like an avocado as well. I thought he, like, I thought he pulled it out. Like he pulled this part of his head out. So like it was split like on the side. Okay, but still, like that is yeah. psychologically yeah. horrific all right. to me. Mark, with all that information you just heard, <laughs> what would you add? this you can't knock him for keeping us on the rails at least (laughs) to the i i like okay so you've got uh you already have right like them there's a couple there was that other lady there's the family there's a gut so i'd have like like some drunken salesman dude who is just you know like the down on his luck salesman just slumming it out in the you know like i don't even know if he shows up like he just pops out Right, he's already there. Like, this is this Mark? Is this your insert character? You're like, yeah, I want to like, be in the movie. It's me. Just, no, he's, gonna, he's, just, <laughs> no, he's just gonna like you ask who's gonna get at the motel, so he's just added in the motel. He pops out of the motel, right? Like drunkenly added in, and just starts like adding in um, information that probably is maybe not even right. But and maybe some of it is right later. You know, like he adds that's, enough. That's what I'm thinking. Like a lot of it might not be. Like you already had sort of that drunk guy, the one yeah. dude. Who then goes? He's like, I didn't, I didn't tell him nothing. But the extra yeah. guy's like, man, you want to get out of here, Sonny? This place ain't right, kind of thing. And then he goes down in some way, but maybe he gets captured, and he's like, gets, he comes out later, and maybe he tries to warn her against the girl, and maybe he, it gets smoked by accident instead of the girl, which leads to the end. That's how I would add that character. That's- He's in the beginning, Mark, pops up I feel later. like you, you gave him a beginning, middle, and end. <laughs> like, you, you were like, his name's, his name's Joe. <laughs> I would have fully replaced life. your character that you just pitched there. I would replace the homeless character that is, om- is similar to what you're describing. Yeah. But since you gave him a whole arc through the movie, like that homeless dude just like says some shit, warns, warns him with the factory. He was super vague that gets his head. Yeah, pop I would right like off. to see a, like somebody else come back at the end. The old yeah. pop up and either like do a heroic save or like the old we don't trust you and you die instead and I trusted the wrong person. I like that mm. whole twist. And he was you guys want to hear what I would add? Yeah. No. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know when he goes into the room and he he writes his name in the the ledger and he puts the money down? Yeah. I I would love if he left that room and then you just see like a hand like go down and like rip that whole page out and then it zooms up and he's like a like a very Asian looking man but he's wearing the same gray suits as the gray suit guys that you see the, the entire time and he is just like following them the entire time and he starts like like killing people and like throughout the movie he's just like an assassin for like a, another company that also <laughs> has a, a blarney stone or whatever the fuck like he's just some <laughs> other fucking assassin <laughs> and he's like killing all the assassins like at one point they're like running and like all the assassins are fighting and then he like lands like and like starts killing all the other assassins wouldn't that Wait, be cool that's, that's a different <laughs> that's a different movie i mean change <laughs> the well that's how you set up a sequel couple assassins well he set up the sequel by doing what they did in this movie too kind of but it's john carpenter so yeah well, it's called halloween four the chinese blarney stone <laughs> return of the witch i had a theory going into this um that the whole mask thing we're going to get a reveal that the mask that michael myers wears is actually created by this company and that the, the Michael Myers insert and the reason they're so strong is kind of explained through these uh, these soldiers, the, the agents, before you know that they're robots. I, yeah. But all of my theories, this is Jason's theory corner, by the way. All of my theories are destroyed by through a couple through a couple things. They show not only do they show the ad for the original Halloween in the bar scene when he's just sitting at the bar, they add to the original, <laughs> but later in the movie, they're like you know Cochrane does that monologue about how he like hates halloween because of like his irish roots and he's like now i'm gonna make you watch the movie halloween 
and he just <laughs> puts a mask on him and makes him Halloween. watch Halloween. And then it's revealed that the the agents are robots. So it destroyed my theory. Um, I will say the home alone of it in this one, I think, is probably when he goes in to like rescue and Mark, starts home alone, that means when you say the home alone of it you know in home alone when like all of a sudden home alone starts where he's like dun, 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 dun. he puts the fucking oh, blueprint yeah, 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 down yeah, on the yeah, table yeah, yeah. and rolls it out when we say that's... the home alone of it yeah that's like that's cool. I, I find that there it's usually like the third act but sometimes it starts much earlier but i think yeah. the home, home alone of it is either when they get to town and they start sleuthing or it could be said that when he goes back into the factory by himself and he's just like sneaking around and doing the stealth shit, and then he kills all those agents. That could also be considered that, in my opinion. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this movie is also kind of hard to track because it's so there's so much stuff, but at the same time, there's like not that much stuff. It's, like it's it's one of those where if you just keep hitting the points of the movie as we talk, it's probably the best way to to do this. All right. Well, I I give you guys free reign to also jump in. <laughs> like I'm not gonna... <laughs> And then this happened. But you know, like the beginning of the movie was pretty great. Like it it had so much carpenteriness to it that I was like, this is more of a John Carpenter movie than John Carpenter's directed Halloween yeah. one or two. Mm-hmm. Like it it is just way. It more john carpenter i saw prince of darkness in this i saw mouth of madness in this i saw um and those then you two heard movies it, heard it in your ears yeah and then the music is that and like the, yeah. the the way it ends in a weird like nothing is resolved is kind of like uh the that fucking... was the thing that mark you sent me today was like even just the sound of this is a goddamn <laughs> it's like yeah it is yeah. It's, it's so good yeah, I it's love like, the sound, like, like all of it, and like it's like showing the like, ding, ding, like like the the screen, the screens are moving, but like it's moving with the sound, and you're like, John Carpenter really knows how to edit a scene to have the music paired with the scene, even if it's bad, which it is kind of bad, but it's also like, like, if it's Danny very- Elfman can do Coachella like he did last year, <laughs> fucking John Carpenter should do a set at Coachella with a symphony. And do all the cla- all his classic themes because he like the Halloween yeah. theme is like as iconic as like the Simpsons I'd say. It would get the people going. Or Batman. I think it maybe even more iconic. Yeah. Eh, but yeah. What's the um? <laughs> they live. I saw a lot of like they live in this as well with they with them revealed as a. Uh, I think the robots. light is very they live, but also very uh, the thing, and also kind of like. A little bit of uh, big trouble, you know? yeah, and escape from oh, like, uh, escape from New York, like the nighttime parts, and the quietness. Sometimes it's real quiet. Like John Carpenter movies is quiet as a sound a lot too, or yeah. just like like room noise to be to really get it. Like I, we talked about um, my problem with Escape from New York is like it's, it's those two movies are like two ends of a spectrum where Escape from New York is a little too slow. A little bit too quiet, a little bit too much of snakes sneaking around, not even like in a cool stealth way. And then Escape from LA is just like just a garbage fire in your face, but it has its own merits. Has it's, its like, own what things. It did the same thing, but I added a shark. And uh and, and it was just that the whole time. Bruce <laughs> you know, Campbell in a dead skin <laughs> mask, which is the like best that. part of the movie. Yeah. And Steve Buscemi, wise crack and wise. Nailed it. All right. Um, I think we got through everybody's edition. And you know what? I think that it would be a better movie had we added those characters. <laughs> An assassin, a bunch of teenagers, and whatever <laughs> Galen said. I can't remember. <laughs> what did you say? A drunk guy? No. Uh, either uh, another, like, either doctor or lawyer that uh, uh, has a way about him that people fawn over him. Right. That, so he's like super smart. That's what you want. Like a super smart guy. He's like, he's not bad. He's like, he's an opposition. I know, but why is he a lawyer? Is it because you just want him to be smart? Like he, he no, seems he can be a smart. doctor. No, well, it just seems like, it seems like girls are falling over this guy just because he's a doctor. Yeah. He's not doing anything special. So how about a lawyer? Yeah. 
uh, feet over, over heels, or heels or whatever it's called. Heels over head. What's the expression? Head over heels. Head over heels. Yeah. It, your head's always over your heels. What kind of expression is that? It's, you know what, though? I think that's very funny to, to think that everybody is falling head over heels for the doctor and you throw a lawyer in. And then he's like, I'm the other good thing that people like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you look at Dr. Dan and he's ugly. He's got a mustache. He's like 50. Some people like the stash ride. He could be 35 though. Pretty oh, impeccable it's 1982. Stash. It's a great stash, <laughs> but I mean he's got it's like an 80s porn star stash. When he gets on top of the girl, you see his gross back. Steve was like, ew, look at his back. <laughs> I did say that. I did say, oh my god, his back. <laughs> look at it's a back. Have you guys ever been... gives the boobs a kiss? He sucks that titty. <laughs> yeah, the titty That's suck. So weird. I think we could we could talk about it for a bit if we want. Or we no, I don't think it needed to be there. No. I don't even think they should have hooked up. They just met the other yeah. day. That's where it I was. was it was an odd. The, that's what sold me on her being a robot the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you you, you make a good point there. there. The titty like, She's their sex. The human, sex no human's doing this. No human. Why is she going? Why is she trying to investigate her own dad's thing? That it could be that she had not. She didn't even know the guy. She's a plant, like what Mark said. She was just put in there to, to pretend like that was her dad. That's right, but like, so why to find the doctor and stop him? Like, how'd they know the doctor was going to look into it at all? I don't know. This movie had this movie because had a he's really... the doctor. The Hippocratic oath. It had a really unintelligent, like M Night Shyamalan twit twist, is what I kind of noticed about it, or a series of unintel like the robots were cool, but it's dumb, and the her being a robot is cool is interesting. But have it's you guys like, ever met a doctor though? Like they they do often make crazy decisions that are like dumb. Yeah, because because yeah. Like, I, I need yeah. I need to do this for the betterment of humanity. Like they will do crazy shit i gotta feed these kids hypnosol so they don't dream <laughs> like none of us know how to, none of us know how to like take blood from someone but i do in, in a, i can figure it out <laughs> okay fine none <laughs> of us knife, right? to inject blood into it. Uh, and do i don't you I guys would... wear a hanky out of your back pocket of your pants do i no either any of you no <sighs> Do any of you wear a pocket square at all? No. All right. So, Mark, Dude, hold on. Mark, I want to know where this is going. Mark and, Mark and uh, uh, Jason, I gave you guys a vial of blood in the back of your pants. Check your back pa pants right now. Now, attack Kalen and inject it into him. <laughs> as hard as you can. I want to know what I want to know what you were talking. I want to know where you were going with that, Kalen. I just I don't. He's got a he's got a hanky. It's like he's a crip, or well, maybe not a crip. Maybe he's like a What's another? I he does. Gang related well, thing, isn't the, yeah, isn't God the hanky, TV, he does. He's walking around with it, flapping around. Isn't the hanky supposed to be a signal in prison that you're uh, you're DTF? Um, but also <laughs> that sounds like, kind of familiar, but I don't know. <laughs> but also like uh, like just rockers do it as like a style. I don't know about the pocket. I don't know about the. Maybe the he likes milk. And he needs to, you know, just. Clean it up afterwards. Uh, could, be. It. <laughs> no. could be. Yeah. I mean, I, it is an odd. It is. Uh, he wears a plaid shirt and it's plaid. So maybe it's sort of like the suit thing. It's supposed to tie that it sucks. in. Maybe it was something they just tried in 82 and it just didn't stick. You know, <laughs> the, the, the rear pocket square. <laughs> Yeah, the thing like, that made it out of the '80s though was the mullet, and the, that's another thing that this guy has. He's—it's not a full mullet, but he's got that fucking dis distinct '80s hair. Yeah, it's long, not as short. I guess as so, hair. but he's—I would call. I'm not sure I call him mullet though. He's 100% dad. Ted right? he's hair. Dad. He's 100% dad. Like he is dad, right? Am I wrong? I say dad or dad. Dad. He's I wrote dad. him. I called him Dad all like the yeah, main yeah. character. I called him yeah. Dad all through my notes. I didn't fucking know what his name was, so I called him Dad. I or called Doc. him Doctor, and I called. Like, the... We all got uncomfortable when he sucked on that titty, right? We were like, yes. Yeah, that was weird. 
Like this, so <laughs> it's a trope that in horror. What do you movies, say? Like, how could you ask me that? Or you, you already know. What, I forget what he says. Now. Yeah, didn't he ask the next day? Like, are you legal or something? No, right after he had sex with her, he goes. She, he goes. Aren't you a little bit tired at all? And she goes, I could go all night or whatever. And then he's like, Also, how old are you? And she goes, Old <laughs> enough. And then he's like, Good enough. And then they have sex again. Um, yeah. And that was that after was after And then yeah. he puts his ID next to her ID on the. He's like. Right. Yeah. Uh oh, I'm going to jail. I guess she was a robot the whole time. If she's a robot, she didn't actually say a name. Listen, if it's a robot, it's legal. two years old. She could be 300 years old. Robots, you'd never know. It's true. One of the reasons that this movie kind of like makes me go ugh, ugh. Like the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> it's so unnecessary. I don't. I want to know what that writer's room was like thinking and there's a bunch of perverts in there is that scary like is that supposed to be it's a movie for adults so we have to put some adult subject matter in it even if it's okay i don't think it's scary i think it's supposed to be sex cells i think it needs to be more pervy i'm more with that i'm more with caitlin side yeah like it's uh, horny studio swept swooped in they're like hey boys uh, we're gonna need a sex scene in here yeah Yeah, like it doesn't matter and they're like we're gonna need one we're gonna need have a sex suck on a titty. We need. I want to. I want to talk about that for a second, though. It is a trope <laughs> that horror movies have to have some sort of frontal nudity on on a woman and possibly a man's ass. This yeah. has a man's ass. We used to yeah. see the whole. Also, who not. puts their pants on with no underwear? Oh 80s. yeah, people in the eighties. I don't yeah, think they. And I don't think underwear ballad. was invented until nineteen ninety two. If I'm being honest, <laughs> but but he least, also yelled that when he put his pants on. He said. Who puts pants on with no underwear? As he <laughs> on. I heard it. But this Ow, movie the has the weirdest fucking nudity I've ever seen in a movie where you see her get out of the shower, you see her like nude, but you only see her from the waist down as the as the as the trans blue, translucent door closes, right? Or trans it's foggy. Yeah, yeah, it's the, closing. The, you see you yeah. see like the side of her. But as it closes, she's putting on like a towel, and then you just see Bush, which is like, what the fuck is happening? And then when you finally get a, the, the point where I was like, oh, now they're going to show breasts, he covers up her boob with his head to go in to suck it. <laughs> yeah, and he yelled, sucky, sucky, motherfucker. Sucky, sucky, motherfucker. <laughs> it's just... and, then, and then they picked up the, the comforter of the the bed and wrapped it around her. She didn't even dry herself no. off. Oh, that was see you grabbing that fucking comforter. It was bizarre. Blanket. This movie has no boobs, but it has full bush. And I yeah, there was no nip, right? There was no nip other than when it's he was gonna suck on that nip. And at that point we were all like, this is not nip we want to see. No. We don't want to see this. He had small nips. I noticed that. <laughs> okay. Well we saw uh, man uh, nip and man ass and balloon man balloon knot. We saw Wait, rusty, balloon not. Geez. We saw rusty wagon wheel, but yeah. we didn't see any titty nip. Okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> so they are in the hotel, and that's when everyone shows up. And we already did the the funny bit where we all decide who gets to show up as well. But uh, after this, it's sort of like the mayor shows up, I guess, like to show them that he's like... Well, he's the owner of the factory. That's Cochran. That's that's the owner of the... He's not the mayor, but he basically runs the place. He owns the... he. Okay, so when they're driving there, they they kind of explain... I think she's meant to be reading like the history, and it was just farmland, and a, a rich millionaire came in and bought the farm, turned it into the factory. I was expecting a comically huge factory, but then you see the factory, and it looks like a converted Tiny. school. <laughs> Looks yeah. like a barn almost. Yeah, it's small. And then they go underground and it's way bigger underground. Well, we find out too, they, they yeah. get there. Later in the movie, they go on like a tour and there's like a kind of a museum of like toys and masks in the basement. And we find out that Cochrane was actually like a big toy manufacturer at some point. And it reminded me of like, it reminded me of like the toys movie a little bit. Um, this this part reminded me of uh the Goosebumps television show. Like, yeah. it made me realize, yeah. oh, we're yeah. watching a goose, like a, a movie of a Goosebumps episode. They, they made one of those. They, but they, those Goosebumps movies just incorporate like a bunch of Every, books in one. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Where the TV show is each individual book was an episode. And this kind of felt like the ma- the mask one. 
except for there were no like kids dying with snakes coming out of their eye. <clears throat> Which was a great special effect, I have to say. It also would have made that episode better. It's true. Yeah. Probably. I loved that show as a kid though. Like this is yeah. this is horror for kids. Like Imagine I'm a kid. A snake was coming out of a masked kid's eye. On Y T V at nine PM like, on a Saturday. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> we all nightmare yeah, you yeah. tell it to your parents like oh it's just made after a book that i read <laughs> exactly and they're just like cool go watch it <laughs> go watch it um are we all the... full of bugs and snakes and uh stonehenge just uh brings it out of us or something i think so okay i think that's the implication when i was a kid though compared to goosebumps like this this movie is actually like actually an episode of are you afraid of the dark because that shit was actually scary yeah i'll give you that yeah I like Terry Fred. It's it was uh that messed me up. There's one about like a ghost girl that actually was like nightmarish. Maybe that maybe that had to do a little bit with why I was bad with horror movies later in life. I saw Robocop Mark. You were too scared of Are You Afraid of the Dark? I think Are You Afraid of the Dark. I saw Robocop when I was like seven or eight, which is just you're too it's too young to see to watch Robocop when that's the peak fucking special effect technology too. So like yeah, anyway, I uh, that messed me up. I couldn't handle it. And then horror movies, much like Steve, horror movies just... The thought of them put me into, like, a mind prison I couldn't escape. Just thinking about the, horror movies. You escape the prison, you're like, <laughs> I own the prison now. I, I am watch whatever the prison now. now. And you just, like, watch every fucking thing that you possibly do. Yeah, and I, I, I would all to The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead showing, like, all that gore. That's, like, ten years later. <laughs> that's true took me a long time the walking you, dead was my I, it eased, no, it eased I, me in that's when, that's when me and mark and andrew and matt we like we got real into those fucking horror movies when we were like 14 15 years old we're like we gotta watch every single one and we we gotta figure out how to do a good freddy impression we gotta figure out how to do a good chucky impression andy, andy. yeah <laughs> And like we we got good at that shit. What about your Jason impression? I'm doing a Jason impression every day. Okay. (laughs) Steve hated that joke. (laughs) Jason, you need to sucky sucky motherfucky. Jeez, Jason, you don't want to attack me. I've got your mother's sweater on. You don't want to attack me. Anyway, stab him and then... what I'm saying is that some of us learn the lesson early and run towards it, right? And some people stay a little bit further away for a longer time. And Jason, that's what you did. But I like that, though, because it makes you more mature when you watch these things. Whereas me and Mark were maybe little baby boys and we're like, this is great. This is great. Look at these people getting their heads killed off. I kind of wanted to get a brown paper bag of a 40 to uh, celebrate the scene in this movie. But I couldn't uh, I couldn't bring myself to buy one, unfortunately. You didn't want to drink a cold 45 tonight and just have a hangover as soon as you were done drinking it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We used to play a game called Edward 40 Hands in uh, like in my early 20s. You've, I, we, me and you probably played that together or, or uh, fax hands where you tape a fucking 10% fax to your hands and drink both of them and by the end of it it's just warm piss it's awful, it's the stupidest yeah. fucking 22 year old bullshit ever but you get drunk uh, I think they fucking wasted like that at some point yeah we're like <laughs> wizard sticks look how big my wizard stick is I, I came all home of these and... wizard stick drinks I came home one night uh, and my roommate's fine. boyfriend was just up. He had been up all night and I got off work at like 5 a.m. and he was playing wizard sticks by himself. And his wizard <laughs> stick was like 12 beers already. So I was like, gotta join him. And so, yeah, <laughs> it was not I don't a think I know scene. what wizard sticks is. <clears throat> it's when every beer that you finish, you tape it to the beer. So by the end of it, you have a giant staff of beer Oh, like hands. a shaft? Cool, nice. Yeah. Like yeah. a Gandalf, yeah. Like like a Gandalf. Gandalf. You walk around with it like I am a wizard. <laughs> I'm a wizard. And you fall off the balcony. You're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Did uh? So before we knew they were robots, did you guys ask yourself 
why the fuck didn't you get out of that way, get out of the way of the car coming right at you? Like at the around the beginning of the movie when that mystery guy in the suit is trying to choke I the have father a, guy that's running? I also have a, a follow-up question. Did you guys think they were aliens at the start? Because I thought they were aliens. The I beginning. thought that they had paranormal, like some sort of paranormal situation. That's when I when they were walking and moving yeah, like that and like being <laughs> invincible. I just thought that they were like uh I thought they were trying to explain elements of michael myers through a different medium that's like i explained that's actually like smart movie watching where you're you're thinking about the previous movies where i in no way was ever thinking about the other movie because i i think i knew already that it it had nothing to do with the other one i'm just like i don't care and this movie in my head was just a bad movie that had that had nothing to do with the previous two or didn't have michael that's how people think about dragon ball gt yeah what (laughs) but it's actually pretty good in its own right i mean if you're into that sort of thing (laughs) but most people are like dragon dragon ball dragon ball z Z? question mark dragon dragon ball z z (laughs) (laughs) that's also a thing that me and mark would run home Let's go. We gotta get. We gotta catch Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball when I could, yeah. yeah. Sucks when you don't live in the right time zone to get there on time. Well, yeah. Mark also lived like slightly too far away that he would miss it a lot of the time, right? Oh fuck! Oh, I miss. I, I miss it constantly. I miss a lot of shows. <laughs> like he'd come in. I get home next time on Dragon Ball Z. It's like, <laughs> Damn it! No! Your dad would be like, ha 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 ha. But then at some I point, saw the whole episode. Done. At some point when I was young, my parents bought, uh, what was it called? Star Dish? I don't know, some satellite thing that was out there at the time. And it had the, um, you know, what's it like? The West Coast channels? Cartoon so, Network like, or two dollars. Yeah, I got to like, 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 I wait three hours, I could watch it on the West Coast version <laughs> of the <laughs> ITV. And so you're sitting there. The problem is if it's a nine o'clock show, you're like, all I gotta do is wait till midnight and then I can watch the show. <laughs> but you're like a kid, you're like waiting up at eleven o'clock, like, whoa, need another three colas just to like keep going all night. Get that Mountain Dew in you. Slamming yeah, exactly. cola all night. How did you guys feel about the timestamps in this movie? For example, I an hour them. later and he shows up at the gas station. Did I need to know it was an hour later? <laughs> I think you did though. I think you did. I think they were important. Steve pointed out at one point that it was very John Carpenter to like just tell you at the bottom of the screen what was going on as well. Yeah, yeah. The one major. I, I don't know if it was entirely necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Not a I lot. Mean, of... Maybe a couple of the days to give a little bit of time frame, like, but like I like yeah, what I'm saying. I liked that they did it. I don't know okay. if it needed, but I liked it. I, I mean, like it did prove how little time he knew that girl. It's like an hour yeah. later. I'm there. They're, they're, like, they in there. they're like, we need you to know how old she is. <laughs> the hours. She was just made when uh when they when they knew the doctor was chasing after the first mystery guy at the hospital, like, oh, this guy's gonna try and look into this. We gotta build a sex robot to stop him <laughs> and have sex with him and his mustache. And his gross back and his <laughs> rusty wagon wheel on display <laughs> pair of jeans that fit just right and a radio no wait that's chicken fry that's not wagon wheel so I, I guess like the the main sort of story of this is that he's trying to this man this irish man who has control of a single stone from stonehenge <laughs> and he's making these masks and he's distributing them throughout the you know the neighborhood or whatever he's trying to make the magic go further and like how much do you hate or like that in terms of like uh comparing it to michael myers you know like do you like michael myers more or would you have liked to have seen another halloween movie that was another anthology that had nothing to do with michael myers Based on, I'm going to answer that in my outro. Based, yeah, based, but based on your information that you gave me today, Steve, you said that this almost acts as like a pilot for the television spinoff. 
Mm-hmm. And it makes me want to go watch the TV show to see what other, because it seems like what they wanted to do is tell a series of anthology style stories that just happened to take place on Halloween. Well, it wasn't a Halloween show, but it was a John Carpenter show where oh, John okay. Carpenter, like, oh, hey, man. And he was like kind of like a crypt keeper. I would like a series of, I would, I would have liked to see where they wanted to go though, and having a series of movies like Halloween well, Horror. Really was the show, and it, 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 it sucks. It sucks a lot of dick. It's not like good. the Friday the Thirteenth show or the fucking Mortal Kombat show. All those bullshit the, sci-fi channel movies from the nineties. All of the shows that spawned off all these these movies. That spawn every show. single one sucks. Yeah, they all suck. Spawn cartoon no, was spawn actually was really good. good though. What was the spawn? T- the spawn TV show was before the movie, so yeah. that existed before the movie, and it was based on the comic. It had nothing to do with the movie. No, but I'm just saying the TV show is good. <laughs> what um, did you say, Spawn, or did you say something else? Did I miss here? No, he said it spawned something like it, oh. it created. It, it, yeah, and then that just made my mind go, "Hey, Spawn was a good movie or a uh, show or whatever." Yeah, the Spawn cartoon. The movie, not so much. The, the Spawn cartoon came out like right before the movie, and a lot of people were expecting the movie to be amazing. Yeah. And then we've all seen Spawn. It's not amazing. It's a trash fire that I liked when I was 13. I like Spawn. When I was 13, I thought it was the I was like, oh my god, they finally did a comic book movie correctly. Then you <laughs> go back and look at all the weird yeah, cape. Fine. They I spent don't. all the money on the cape. <laughs> that you only get for like one or two scenes. Because they Three. had to only have a really low budget to do just cape effects. And then Michael J. White's pretty good in it. And but like Anyway, this isn't a podcast yeah. about <laughs> the Spawn movie. We'll talk about that someday, I'm sure. I like the Spawn movie, but in no way do I like it in a way that I'm like, they finally did a comic book movie right. No, I'm just in, like, this is good. It's fun. It's when fun I was movie. a kid, like what that movie came out when I was like in what, like 1998? I was like 14. They'd never done anything like that on the screen really before. So we've confirmed on the show now that Jason was a stupid 14-year-old. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, if you guys were a nurse no, or orderly or doctor, would you stop the mis- uh, mystery guy from leaving the, the patient room after... No, not at all. People? No. I mean, I guess it's a... 19... First of all, my <laughs> question about that whole scene, let's take a step back there. Yeah. The lot comes up with a good question. There's two people for an entire hospital at like whatever <laughs> time. It's all they had the budget for. Like, but like, I guess other people came out. But then when the other people come out, when he blows up the car, there's like five of them. So the only thing I can surmise is that there's like one nurse, one doctor, and a bunch of patients. Yeah. And like, that's the hospital you're getting. That's so, the 80s for you. So you have to rely on the patients to block your exit if you're being. Oh, does anybody, everybody remember when he's drunk? To start that, because she's like, yes, "Oh, drinking and awesome. doctoring—that's a great idea." And he's just like, "Duh, don't talk." To Ex-wife me. sneaking in a little jab. I caught yeah. that as well. I was like, "Okay, eighty-two. All right, settle in for this." <laughs> I fully didn't pick up that they were that those two were at odds, and now it's in retrospect. I'm like, she was a little bit like snippy to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And then he's never there to pick up the kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. he he's again, I mentioned earlier, flirtatious with the other staff this new chick she just met like i'm thinking his drinking and his flirtatiousness was the end of their marriage that's yes. true and i will say yeah. that I've, I've mentioned this on the show before that the first time i watch a movie i usually like this happens when i play video games too i'll like miss the first little bit even though i'm paying fully attention it doesn't it takes a while for like the movie to like hit my long-term memory or something (laughs) so if if that stuff was all mentioned like later i would have fully remembered it but since it's like the movie's fresh in my head i'm trying to like put together what's going on i just my brain just has this thing where it just glosses over like early episodes of seasons of tv shows it happens to me too like i don't know what happens of rewatching things exactly yeah exactly it's because the next time i watch this down the road someday i'll put this on and be like oh i just fucking i see all of it i see all of the things that we talked about on that episode now i see a little bit more so not only was i a dumb 14 year old i'm a dumb 38 year old (laughs) (laughs) you're not you weren't either i was just kidding around i know 
<laughs> it's called a callback, Steve. Who's the dumb one now? You, as a 14 year old and a 38 year old. So I also like, I think about like when they go into that big room, right? Where they have the, the big piece of Stonehenge, I guess. Yeah. And Secret lab or whatever. Yeah, but like it's like a void in all directions, right? Where it's just like yeah. blackness. And then they go to like those little desks and there's people that are like, <laughs> like using like an air hose to like clean up pieces of stuff. And you're like, what is that? What is, is, is that a part of a robot from earlier? Like, I don't know what that is. Did you guys, like, am I, did a I little, miss something? What is that? A little that? Eric thing? Those things? I think that they were put there just for, like, so scientists were doing something. Feng oh, shui those? aesthetic. That's, That's awesome. what I thought, too. But I was like, am I missing something? Like, they, they can't just be cleaning miscellaneous like pieces of junk like just they, they must be there for a reason what was that word what was that word that you said there steve uh miss miscellaneous <laughs> did it for my yeah. yeah but i wouldn't normally call somebody out for mispronouncing a, a word because i'm not a dick but that was just a great way to mispronounce miscellaneous it was just a, <laughs> it was just a funny mispronounce i'm sorry i don't mean i just don't feel bad it was just a funny one so they start blowing hot air inside this guy's ass. And he says, oh, my anus, my miscellaneous. It's full go. of air now. Those it's things. It's so full of air. Don't, I, aren't those things used in, like, building compute, like, factories? But I couldn't figure That's out. That's where what, they are. Yeah, but I couldn't figure out what he's doing either, other than, like, they, they were working with putting rocks on those They're probably, like, coins. getting rid of dust. Yeah, it could have been. Could have been. But I also feel like it was just <clears throat> so the the brain dead, the face dead fucking lab people were just doing things in the background. It really felt like that to me. Yeah. We're I mean, doing science. There's also like the, the hypnotism, right? Like that we all get introduced to. How do you guys feel about the hypnotism? It's like not I would like a better hypnotism, I think. The rules were I got hypnotized once, but I knew what was going on. But I enjoyed just, it. Time just play along. Can well, you know, power of persuasion, if you want to call that. <laughs> oh, God. Come again? I said you shit bugs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we don't normally have, like, we don't normally have these, like, weird little breaks in Lull. like lulls Lull. because Lulls. I think it's because Steve's not on a like a computer and it's caught it's making it like there's little breaks in our in our conversation. Yeah so what I said was Kalen shit a bunch of bugs at his ass. Yeah and okay true fact last night I ate craft dinner. <laughs> Kids craft dinner no <laughs> I had craft dinner three nights ago and I didn't shit myself do you make yours nice and creamy with milk mark Mark, did you remember the snake did you remember the snake okay that was gonna say that was one of my i loved that part like the the kid i don't remember the snake from when i was a kid i remember the bugs i don't really remember the snake and i definitely don't remember it biting the guy in the leg and killing him but i remember but like just the way i thought that just like even for the time the way that like the the mask melted on the kid's yeah. head. I thought that was really cool. Like even to today, I like even I thought that stood up even in twenty twenty three because it was like it got all rubbery and then like there's like the blood behind it a bit and then the bugs came flying out and I was like, all right, all right. Yeah, right on Where face. do you stand on practical versus CGI, Mark? Oh, I'm a practical guy ninety percent of the time. I think CGI yeah. has come like a long, long way, but like, I mean. Especially in horror films, like horror films, you, I, there's just it makes no sense to do CGI in my sense. And then like horror films extend to like, oh, I'm a I, I'm a big Star Wars guy, as Steve said, like in the beginning. Um, like you can't you can't beat the mechanicals, like like all that kind of stuff. The practical, like just everything, just looks better. Even if it's like you're like, oh, that's cheesy or whatever, you'll be like, I'm gonna give you ten thousand more points for trying than to be like, you know. Hey, cool, we threw him in front of a green screen. Although Carpenter has, does like a few, like, he likes his, like, 
running away green screens. Have you ever <laughs> noticed? Like the all the flames, something's on fire in the background, and they're like, let's get out of here. And he's like, he's like we'll film this later. Yeah, like when they're walking away from the or they're running away from the building towards the end. I mean, I don't know, yeah, that a, looks pretty bad. <laughs> he's such a practical guy. It might not have been a green screen. It might have been just like some giant TV screen that they put behind him, and he's literally <laughs> playing the fire as they drive away. And he's like, it's so practical. So I don't know. But... Technically, I, I like I like that Chris Nolan uses miniatures for a lot of his crazy shots. I think yeah. that's a cool way to do it. And uh, this uh, this movie has one of my favorite gore effects of any of the movies we've done when she gets lasered Ooh. in the face yeah like, that was cool and then she does this like reveal to like show that it blew her mouth blew open. Out her. <laughs> yeah 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 that i thought awesome. and then a just one single like i don't even know what kind of bug that was it was fucking gross but I but also it like cool. it's so cool because those guys come together they're like she d- died from laser coin we have to go get a misfire like they, they just showed up like, and Cochran like, also shows up and she's like yeah. they're like shouldn't she go to the hospital and he's like hey, look we have the yeah. finest medical and she's never seen her seen again finest oh. medical facility <laughs> her face is melted her Outworld. last name is gutman which i feel like is like a some sort of pseudo name <laughs> pseudo pseudo <laughs> He's not gonna hear the end of that, at least not for this episode. I've never no, heard I, that pseudo name. I feel like it's <laughs> yeah. a uh, I feel like it's uh like the writers being like her she's gonna get gutted, man. Gutman. I mean the the kill with her the face, uh, not her gut. True. Sir? The kill with the uh the lady with uh the lab tech when they rip her head off. Oh that was course, also pretty cool too. I thought that was another really cool like uh like, yeah, not scary, but, like, gory. I thought that was really cool. Because she's just, like, I thought they were going to go in because they, they baited it like he was going to do the eye, the old eye stab again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead he just rips her head straight <laughs> off. I was like, but oh. I thought the lab anatomy. tech the lab tech was the drill. Oh, sorry, yeah, she was the drill. The, I think right. you're thinking of the homeless guy. The homeless, the, homeless uh, guy the got head the head ripped off. off. With the yeah, really and fake the spurting, looking. That just reminded me of, um, of uh, Quentin. Wait, you get a little bit of a spurt out of the neck. That was, uh, I liked. That was Quentin cool. Tarantino. Sorry, I was mixing the two up. The reason why I'm saying is she's on the screen behind me right now. I'm now. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> and she also flirts her- with the doctor. Uh, they have a little kiss. This yeah. guy is picking up everywhere. Yeah, and he calls her up. They, they, they Different have- area codes. Actually, no, they're on the same area code. But still, <laughs> the song applies. This guy is, yeah, he's... He's all over the place. He's laying pipe, which is such a John Carpenter character thing to do, I feel like. I feel like that's a... Tro- not that what, it's happened what, in other movies i mean but okay feels... so i know we're talking about john carpenter movies like what type of john carpenter movie do you like the best like he makes so many different things right like what do you what do you like the best you, you've got your uh your big trouble in little china you've got your the thing you've got movies like this you've got everything there's so many to choose from like which ones do you like mark I have... do you Okay. I like I like like this I like like the adventure like like so like you know uh, like obviously uh, escape the two escapes like like just the way like he draws out like the adventure and there's one what's the one where he's on Mars like that one's like a little bit more uh, under Mars, of Mars. <laughs> or Ghost yeah. of Mars Ghost of Mars <laughs> we talked about that in February yeah I, but like, like you know like I, he I think he could I think that we watched Ghost of Mars the same night we watched Jason X. <laughs> Probably. Like, Probably. That sounds that sounds familiar. Like, I think we like rented both of them that night. Well, like, you know, he like I he, think those he like in those ones he tells a bit more of a story and I think it's a little more of an adventure. And I like I like that. Um the the um, what's it like not utopian but like fantasy element of it. Like I think John Carpenter yeah. does a really good job telling sci fi or sci fi or fantasy, whatever you want to call it, but He's the fantasy super, element. Super yeah. crazy. He can build a world, in my opinion. Like, Mm -hmm. that's my favorite John Carpenter story. Whatever it may be, it's the world building. When he builds a world that's not like this, like, this is good. Like, I liked it, but it's not like a John Carpenter world has, like, the music goes with, like, the crumbling buildings (laughs) and, like, everything. And it's like, and you're like, everything's timed the same. And it's got that whole aesthetic to it. And you're like, oh, you're in John Carpenter, literally in John Carpenter's world now. (laughs) That's to me mine. 
Well, I don't know if either of you will make a better argument than that, but Jason, go ahead. I can't. I don't, I'm not going to try to make an argument, but I will say something complimentary to what you're saying is it, it doesn't matter really what genre it is. I find that when he mix, I've talked about this on the show too, but when he mixes genres, that's when John Carpenter is at his best. And that might be why I don't like Halloween because it's just horror, it's just a horror movie. All the rest of the ones we've done always mix together like sci-fi and fantasy. This one is like a horror mystery. Yeah, with a little bit of a fantasy element to it with the druids and stuff. So and like, a little yeah. bit of sci and a little bit of sci-fi with the fucking yeah. literally robots and lasers. Yeah. <laughs> robots and magic, yeah. That's yeah, that will be my outro about the robots. What's the point of the robots? What's the point of it? Just to be cool. They're like be... Oompa Loompas. It's like the I mean, Matrix too, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, what else? Okay, like I can't like what else was coming out around eighty two? I guess like you know there was a lot of sci fi stuff around. Outland, 82. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Outland and Return of the Jedi. So you know maybe you needed to throw in a couple robots to stay current. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we also fully are just assuming because of the movie we watched that John Carpenter was involved more than he lets on because we all we have so the producer credit got his fingerprints. It's got yeah. Exactly. Kaylin, you're right. It's got his fucking fingerprints all over it. Like he's yeah, he's manhandling that camera for sure. Like he's on set being like, point it this way. Yeah. Point it this way. <laughs> point it like this. Yeah. And like, okay, John. Okay, John. We'll the do way that. he the way he handles like room context. I don't know what it's called, but like the the way that like when somebody enters a room. And it, the continuity, and then like they turn around. It's called and blocking, con- and it's yeah, and he's very good at blocking. He's awesome at blocking. Yes, yes. thank you, Steve. Yeah. It's one of the weirdest things because like he's not amazing at blo- you know who's amazing at blocking is Steven Spielberg. Like Steven Spielberg is like the best blocker who ever existed. Like, uh, uh, sorry, I'm like <laughs> I'm like fucking I'm gonna fucking start sweating over here. Like he, he knows how to block a scene. Steven Spielberg can look at a room and be like, "The camera comes in from here, and the children come in from here, and the parents come in from here, and then another camera comes in from here." And like that's like Steven Spielberg's brain. But John Carpenter can do it. Like the camera is set here, and it stays here, and then they come in and they walk and they have a conversation, and then maybe. I'll take the camera and I'll put it over there, but I'm going to maybe just leave it here for a while. <laughs> like I'm maybe going to leave it here for as long as I can. And I'm going to make it a really good shot. And then if I need to, I'll move the camera over there. And like, that's, that's how I feel about Carpenter. I, I kind of jumped into my thing. Sorry. What I love about John Too soon. He knows how to fucking set up a goddamn shot, man. He knows how to set up a shot. He fucking knows how to do it. He's and so good. Cheers to that. The 80s, like... I, I think the only 80s director who is better than him is... Uh, what's his name? The guy who Stanley? made Robo- Robocop and uh, Terminator... Not, Tam- not Terminator. Uh, Robocop. Okay, um, uh, Roland Emmerich? Starship, yeah, no, Starship Troopers. and uh, He made uh, Total Recall. I fucking and- talk about this guy all the time. Paul Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven. Oh, yeah. Paul, Paul Verhoeven. He's like yeah. he's maybe the next yeah. one who's like I also know how to put a shot in order, and all of you will listen to my shot. Order. Now watch now. Showgirls, it's and I'll give you what you'll need from it. You remember that moment in Starship Troopers where they're playing football, but it's like weird, super futuristic football. <laughs> they're like doing yes. flips. flips around and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember that. It like shy, like weird, tight. But tight. he films it so well. He's like, <laughs> like they're like just like leaping through the air and shit. It's so good. Ugh, sorry. Okay. Um, Would you expect the RV father to be the highest seller of uh, Halloween masks in the country? Cool. Good question. <laughs> no. Is that- Yes. Is that quite. implied at one point? I thought. Oh, yeah, that's, that's why he. 
He got uh, invited to the factory because he was like the number one. I can sell these like fucking hotcakes. Oh, okay. I got a question for you guys. Which mask was your favorite? Pumpkin. Pumpkin Mark. looks weird to me. They all, I mean, all the three of them are is... really cool, but uh, <laughs> they, 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 so they, like some of like the like the goblin. Thing, there was like the green one. Like they just had them on the it's side. A, it's the witch. It's a witch. Yeah, the, the titular witch. witch. <laughs> yeah, See, all, that one was really good. Uh, and skeleton. Well, it was just only you only saw it though in the in the shop though, right? They never actually who wore it. Uh, the daughter. The daughter wears it at the beginning too. Oh yeah, the very yeah, beginning. He, it's giant. They look hilariously giant on his kid's head. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That was like so. What the, I just remember seeing it in the shop because they also that's the that's the one that like to me the reason why I like that map too is that's the one that they're making when they go through with the latex right. when he does the tour. He pours yeah. them in the hang, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Those masks, I thought, um, had a real horror movie practical effect quality to them where they were like overly detailed compared to like everything else and they do a really good job at the beginning where dan brings in the shitty fucking like dollar store masks yeah and the mom is like i already have masks and then the kids walk over with loser monstrosities (laughs) on their heads but that was also the moment where you i think you said this aloud and we were watching it together and i was like are these masks getting power from Jason's mask. Is there like a Jason mask somewhere in? You mean Michael? Michael, Michael Myers but... mask. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, That's what my... I was saying. Like we were talking. Like the, I said that at the top of the show. My theory before it was just all completely debunked by little things that happen, almost like in in your face, Jason. I think you know what's going on here. Well, <laughs> no, nope. Jason. No. Fre- Mike Myers is actually a character <laughs> in this universe on television, like meta Deadpool style. <clears throat> um the i thought like maybe this cochran dude made the mike myers mask and that's giving the power to all of the kids but then it just turns out that the halloween movie also triggers the masks that whole part where he's got the mask on where dan, dan has the mask on he's trapped right before he fucking whips no i think mask. it was more like a countdown it's like watch this until oh. the, the commercial thing comes up it's like but, speeds up and nee, 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 nee. Yeah. You how see about when he kid. throws that mask right on the camera <laughs> right perfectly that was perfect <laughs> was crazy shock i was like whoa whoa and then it he made me think that this movie is over i was like the movie's over if he did that the movie's over. He's right? have no pro- He does kind of go into like there's an action movie element of it when he finally sneaks into the room with the scientists. He figures right out in that the middle of them. He pour, he just pours all of the remaining like <laughs> coins or whatever they are on the logo short, chips or whatever they are. Yeah, he gets, short circuit. He gets behind a rolling cart. I just yeah. watched it like five <laughs> seconds and <laughs> like, sneaks past them with the that's also, also like, cartoon comedy for sure. Masks. Yeah. It's a mask. Cart. How did nobody notice that? <laughs> right? <laughs> There's just a cart full of masks going across and nobody says anything. Like, don't worry They're, about they, it. They, they were, you know, they were working They're robots. Maybe they <laughs> they were working away, blowing away with the dust. Too. Back to, they are blowing away with the dust. Yeah. Like Steve said, you know, they had a lot of work to do there. Yeah. With the air yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're blowing hot air on things and, you know. So, we got to the end. We're at the end of the movie. I don't really understand the end of the movie. Like I, I, I felt confused. It was. Takes, it takes Dan the whole movie to figure out that the that the commercial, the hypnotism commercial we see through the whole movie is actually what's activating these masks. But by the time he tries, I to do call remember in, him being like, "Shut it down! Shut it shut down! Shut it down!" By the like, time he calls in, the, 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 the commercial. I what's think. weird about it? What's weird about that ending is when he's he, it's it's like he's talking to the people that broadcast studio in real time, and they're trying to turn it <laughs> off. They <laughs> call the TV studio, and they're like, "Who are you? Are you who's this?" But it, but they're, they're calling the TV or global global television yeah. or whatever. It just yeah. gets the person like Hello, covering this is the global broadcast news. on Halloween you night. You gotta turn yeah. that pumpkin broadcast off. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. We don't have a pumpkin broadcast happening right now. You do. You do. It's on channel 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 24. No, they only have three like, channels. Uh, they only have three uh, channels. This is 82. 
but what's weird about it is it's almost like the person this is how i interpreted it the person at the studio is trying to turn it off and it keeps turning back on because it'll be it it went like no broadcast signal or whatever on the screen but that would have been more cool no they flipped the channel they he went to the next channel oh but imagine imagine but but Imagine why the fuck are kids at a gas station late at night trick or why would they trick or treat at a gas station? I have you guys ever <laughs> gone to a gas station? Like, hey, give me I've, I've sent them down there like, for a pack of smokes. I guess I've met, like, I've met a lot of people in my life. Okay, one person at and a time. <laughs> I would say, Kalen, out of everyone I've met in my life, you are the kind of guy that would trick or treat at a gas station for sure. You would be like. This gas station's probably got candy. <laughs> I mean, it's true. <laughs> Not wrong. What were, you, what were you trying to say there, Mark? Sorry. I was saying, maybe it's 82. Maybe they sent down, you know, dad sent them down to pick up a pack of smokes on their way to trick or treat. It's true. <laughs> 82, yeah. He was you can fight through. At of... age seven or whatever. Or maybe they're just trick or treating smokes in 82. You know, here's a pack for you. Here's a pack for you. <laughs> <laughs> so. I had always thought that the the masks turned them into like soldiers for like whoever the big bad was, but it just turns out that it just fucking melts you into snakes. So is the implication at the very end that all of these kids are going to see the ads and just get melted into snakes and bugs? I think the implication is that the, that old guy hates children so much that he wants them. <laughs> These kids would come to our door <laughs> begging me for candy, and I said, "No, no, we are poor too." Or something. He's like that. calling them for the gods. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I'm gonna call Which, them on the I mean, stone. that's a pretty mean god, but you know, cheers to you, I guess. <laughs> Just calling children. Yeah, yeah. This is actually a sequel to Prince of Darkness. I'm down with that. Part, Prince of Darkness came out. I mean, after. I guess before we before we hit the the end, do you get one by one? I'm gonna ask you guys. Do you guys think that this is? the best halloween movie <laughs> like or you know if you have one that you like more speak up about it jason me first so of the three movies um halloween 2 is the most coherent and i didn't like halloween 2 or i didn't like halloween 1 so much that halloween 2 was significantly better but what i'll say is when you compare all three movies knowing that they're all at least related to John Carpenter. This is my favorite John Carpenter movie of the three, but Halloween 2, I think, is the best movie of the three. I haven't seen any other Halloween movie also. So nice. uh, You have. You've seen the first one. You've seen this one. You saw the second one. No, well, other than both ones. Other than those ones. Remember when I said just what I said two seconds ago? Well, you know, you're going to see those. Actually. Mark, you're next. <laughs> uh, um... Yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen a lot of Halloween movies, uh, but I like I do like the first one just in the sense that like it started it all, and in the sense that like at the time like I mean when I saw the first one I saw the first one as the first one, like my like was my older brother or somebody with the very first one I'd seen with like when I was like way too young to see it like dramatically too young to see it but like <laughs> I was like like not that scared of it but I was like well you you know, buddy with the mask, the knife, and, like, to me, um, I think I, I want to say I was, like, 10 or 12, and, like, it tied in an absolute ton of, like, pop culture references to me at the time, so that's sort of why, to mm-hmm. me, then the first one would always be special, because, like, I was like, oh, I get where, like, all the, like, you know, like, they're, like, when we, you see your first Jason, and you're like, ding, ding, the song, like, the, the, the sounds, like, the, all the tropes and everything, you're like, oh, okay, and then, like, once I learned years down the road that John Carpenter was, like, had his fingers on it, I was like, yeah, you justified why you're fucked. Haven't I talked about that exact thing for me for a lot of these horror movies, too, where it fills in all these gaps? There's all these yeah, references Mark, that people put in. Jason yeah, already said all that. No, that's not what I mean, Steve. I mean, <laughs> I'm, agree- I'm saying it in an agreement. I'm saying that, like, when you don't, when you don't get to enjoy these movies because you're too scared yeah. of them, and but like, you watch all one, that media, you watch all those the cartoons and and the, sitcoms, and they reference all this shit. When you finally it is, see it later, it fills in these like weird holes. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's that's one, also why one the of the first things was the first one I saw. Enjoying about 
you, Jason, is that you're you're watching some of these for the first time and you haven't seen them. And then that's why I also am like, Mark's got to come on. Because like Mark was my guy that we watched all these for the first yeah, time. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. It's so nice. It's very nice. It's a very nice experience to see something like this where you, you know, don't necessarily think it's scary and you don't necessarily think it's good, but you understand that you're experiencing something that's in, important, I guess. Like you, you get that it's important. Kalen, your turn. Fuck. Uh. All right. question. To, to, to answer your question and I'm going to elaborate elaborate it elaborate more on it in my outro but specifically to your question uh, out of the Halloween movies no uh, agreeing <laughs> with what Jason said as a John Carpenter movie yes it's up there smart yep. that's, no, good. that's good yeah that's how I kind of feel as well. Like, I, I don't think it's the best Halloween movie, obviously, because it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. And that's what you need to have as <laughs> a good Michael Myers Halloween movie. Because but... in retrospect, what ends up happening is, like, you get, like, if you've never seen any of the Halloween movies, and, and it, like, Gen Z, for instance, there'll be, like, somebody like, Michael Myers is this scary, like, he, like that genre, that movie invented the genre, basically. And they're like, I'm going to watch through all of them. And you watch through all the Chucky movies, watch through the Freddy, and it's the same fucking villain the whole time. It's the same serial yeah. killer, man. And then you're like, I'm finally on the Michael Myers movies. There's new, two, three new movies that just came out to sort of retcon some stuff. You don't really know that. You're like, I'm going to watch them from the beginning. You get to the third one, which <laughs> for horror is not very far into the series, and it's this? Just completely yeah. fucking different. I don't yeah. know. So the thing is, like, you I'll be right back. You gave, it, you gave it the eyebrows. You looked. You leaned in, and you said the third one. But I'm going to say that Freddy Three, probably the best Freddy in my opinion. Chucky Three, no, no you're right there. No. You're right on the money there. But this one, I fucking love this movie. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, it's it not. Bad. It's a completely different movie. It doesn't have anything to do with the other ones. It's that's its what own I'm saying. Movie. But that's that sort of ties into my point. Like you're expecting the these serial killer, you know, familiar killer movies to be it's gonna be the same guy on through all of them. You get to the third one of this series and it's like it's just a different thing. And if you don't know the behind the scenes stuff, this movie came out forty years ago, right? Over over forty years forty years, forty years ago. Hard to watch these things solo. <laughs> That was one of the biggest worries I had about this one. Especially, Mark, go ahead. I have a question that just dawned on me. So we're talking about, like, it's a whole departure, right? But we talked throughout this entire podcast about how, like, it's John Carpenter's had his finger in all, his fingers in all three, right? And thus, he's, like, definitely had his fingers all over this one. Is Michael Myers powered by Druid Magic? Well, yes, and they talk about that in the second movie when yeah. the main. Well, like, the... is it like from the stones? Like, so, like, that's like, see, that's where I wanted to see more of a tie-in. Like, that's the only thing that I didn't. Mark like, wanted a Mark... Mark... Oh. We like... could have, we could have one hundred percent kept the theory <laughs> that I was talking about, but they, True. what they did <laughs> is they went ahead and they put the movie halloween one into this movie which fucks up it messes up everything for it just makes it theorizing it just doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like like steve said it doesn't seem to go i I just i just wonder where it fits in the whole thing other than to just be like maybe there's some other crazy dude who just found this i mean mark i think that what we can say is that we want michael myers to be powered by druid magic we all want Right, like, like we all I mean, like, collectively want that. I think was he right? a different like? I mean, was he a kid where the same thing happened, but it didn't work, and he turned is he into powered like, by a leprechaun? Ooh. Is he a leprechaun? But I don't maybe, know. Like, I mean, maybe he has just, leprechaun. Just, he has, you know, like I mean, like the the magic was throughout that, and it was almost like you know we I don't know who like did he? They want to tell the story about like it seems like the whole point of the story was like the magic was really behind the whole thing. And this yeah, guy's yeah. like harnessing it. And then he talks about the gods at that one point where he's like, you know, we sacrifice our children to like refresh for the gods and all this stuff. And I'm like, but, but also like 
town folks were also like talking about that shit on their way in. They're in like, the second movie, though, the guy, what's the guy's name who's in the first two movies? Who's trying to? Who's got the gun? Donald Dr. Pence. Yeah, he talk, well, He Fuzzy. has that monologue where they're driving. They're driving. He has that whole monologue about how there's like this druidic magic that could potentially be what's controlling Michael Myers, and that's why we. That's why I think this is like the tonight. Yeah. That's where my cogs got turned, but they they show the movie in this movie, and I'm like, fuck, like that, 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 that it makes it like a multiverse situation at that point. <laughs> It kind of hurts, yeah. For you, like you just want it to be like you would like Michael Myers to you exist. Can't, you can't like theory craft the same way when it this when the movie Halloween exists in this universe. It it's stupid. Yeah. It's just a fucking horror movie. But when you when you're gonna talk about it for two hours, you gotta start and think about it all day, <laughs> all week. I, I also start. got like a very good feeling when you went like this, Jason, and then I noticed that you're wearing a Bob Ross T-shirt. You're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ross. Look at that. He also does that with his hand. Um, I think that this movie is telling a story that you want to believe, but then stuff like that happens where you realize that you're not allowed to believe the thing that you want to. You know, the, the Jason stuff, where you're just like, or the Michael Myers stuff, sorry. You want to, you want Michael Myers to exist in this world, but then you see the movie on the screen, and you're like, ugh. Well, because I guess. in the first two Halloween movies, like the same, they're watching the same movie, which is a weird like parallel. They're watching the it takes clo- takes place so close together that like the same movie is on as they follow him to the next house. So it's oh, man, this movie is so weird. Well, this is also a thing that. Mark, I think you're gonna know this. Like, I hate getting too deep into like the the grimy. I know that about you as well because I know you don't want to talk about the movie. Be a movie, you know. You don't want to talk about whether or not the thing has a fucking stone. How do you feel about continuity? How do you feel about continuity, you sick, twisted pervert? (laughs) It pleases my OCD. It pleases my whatever problem I have with my brain too. I love continuity. Don't give a shit about continuity and let continuity. It, you're a liar it fucks up the movie that i already like if it fucks up the movie i already like i hate it but i love it if it makes the movie better <laughs> if, if they somehow make the movie better with continuity then yeah i'm gonna love that shit but if they fuck it up with continuity then i like why did they even try and anything anything hold on hold on hold on anything in between doesn't fucking matter like who gives a shit it doesn't matter i'll tell you who gives a shit people that on solo he was in a movie called solo the star wars story and he was like a star wars man and you know what I that movie. it was pretty good i won't lie i didn't i didn't like that movie what were we gonna say kaylin steve's just left i guess <laughs> oh uh so, uh I feel like the lack of continuity can ruin a movie. I don't think continuity has ever ruined a movie. <laughs> no. If anything, it makes sequels tie together better. Yeah. I just wonder what the people who watched this were like, whoa, but where's Michael Myers? In, in 82, <laughs> that people is, were probably Imagine people confused. walking out of the theater. No, Michael! <laughs> <laughs> there was no the, internet. This, there was no this, internet this was to like, go yeah, look up why there was like no Michael Myers. This is like before a time where people could just be like, so I went to go see the new Halloween 3 movie and no Michael Myers in it. And then someone was like, what? Yeah. what do you, wait, hold on. What do you mean? Uh, Michael Myers wasn't in the movie. Hold I on. I mean, technically, it's in hold- the first episode. Sh- Sit down. I am Tell sitting. Again. Tell me that again with your mouth. Michael Myers was in the movie for a second. Twice. That's true. Kalen, you're ruining this joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do a big, huge thing. And no, you up. can still do it. It's no, valid. I no, I can't. I can't. You fucked it up. You fucked it up, man. You fucked I it up. I unfuck it and give it back. No, it's fine. Um, but that's kind of what movies were back then. Like, you didn't have a million trailers. Like, every time you open your phone. It's like, have you seen Ant-Man, the movie where ants 
become men. And you're like, God damn it. That's this a movie gross oversimplification <laughs> of Quantumania, but you're not too far off. Spoilers. <laughs> Have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy 3? Where Rocket Raccoon definitely is going to die in it. Just so you know. Well, some people are definitely going to die. Why in would you say that? Like, I saw the trailer, and he's 100% going to die in that movie. I think that's <laughs> the bait and switch. Maybe that's that, a misdirect. Yeah, I think I think Batista's going to die because he's done with the franchise. Oh, how about... Did they keep the same director? How about, wait, 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 Kalen. How about this? They both die. That'd nice. Be, eh. How about everyone dies? Give me some Departed. It's the... It, spoilers for I the like Departed. That. Let's take them all out. <laughs> One go. The era of the MCU um, passing the torch is upon us, so you're going to see all your beloved characters die, just like they killed off Iron Man and Captain America. I know, but I care more about the characters from the Guardians of the Galaxy than I do about any other character in all of the mcu do you think they're gonna kill rocket off because in the trailer they show him like find his like lost love and his like history and, I like that they're gonna kill him off because there is a shot where uh he's looking down and she's looking down the bug woman bug head mantis. and and <laughs> man face mantis mantis no no. He, no no he's a man and he has a man face Human man. Here. Human man. Human man. He's she looks down. It's and she looks down. And they're both crying intensely at something that's small. And I'm like, Rocket's fucking done, man. He's dead. Be Cosmo. He's fucking dead, man. They, they introduced they, Cosmo in that Christmas like, special. Rocket's they might kill dead. him. They Cosmo Kramer? In the trailer and they didn't even tell anyone about it? The, the, the dog Cosmo. Tra- rack, tracks, racks, racks, people. <laughs> All right, racks yeah, on racks on racks. I'm, I'm going off the, the rails here. Oh, Take us home, Steve. Um, Take us home, so Steve. So at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy three, nope. Rocket. Who's <laughs> <laughs> nope. not out yet? The end of Halloween three, <laughs> season of the witch. But if you're like somehow watching this like a week after the movies entered theaters, I'm sorry it, that you just their, their mind is like. <laughs> and then they watch it afterwards and they're like he was right um so okay we watched this movie i think we all like this movie right can we all give it a thumbs up I for thumbs approval up. well yeah. ebert's gonna see us from beyond the grave but weird weirdly good weirdly good this is yeah. one of those movies that made me remember that sometimes the three is the best movie have you guys ever seen the third Exorcist movie? No. 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 The movie fucking rules. Like, <laughs> it rules. It rules. But three is also notoriously when it's the worst movie. I know, like but... Back to the Future or Ninja X- Turtles. Rules. Yeah, or it's, Ghostbusters. Not, it's not Ninja Turtles. It's the Exorcist. It's different. Ninja Turtles um, 3 was bad, but it's still kind of fun. I haven't like, seen it in forever, and I really do actually want to watch it to see. Wet Willy! What did you say, Mark? Sorry? I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I saw oh, it in God. theaters, and I owned it on VHS, and I think the last time I watched it was like 1999, maybe. Oof. I'll tell you right now, the second Ninja Turtles movie is a big, giant pile of it shit. It rips it's so hard. Whoa. It's so Whoa. fucking it's good. This is the third action movie rules. And that is fully me talking through rose-colored nostalgia glasses, but Ninja Turtles 2 fucking rocks. It was fine. Tino? Tino and Team 1 was obviously the that time when they go into the sewer and then they're like, wow, it's the sewer. We have a sewer now. This is good. That's what happened. That's what they say. That's like the fucking dialogue. It's they needed cool. to find a new sewer. It's very hard to find good. What's it called? Something under. We were in an old sewer, but now subterranean I layers. Sewer. Subterranean, yeah. yeah, that's exactly sewer. what it was. Yeah, you know, that's, that's not a prime subterranean layer market out there. <laughs> no, because okay. it's a trope Sorry. that the sewers are right. big. They're actually we're at the, the size end of the of... day. It's Halloween three. We did talk about it for a while, a little bit, uh, maybe a minute. I'd say, but. I blame the iPad for me. I'm going to say, Mark, do you want to go first? Mark, if you don't want to go first, that's fine. We'll let someone else go first. It's up to you. You. I can go first. I don't mind. You're on the 
the. I don't. I don't mind. I can. I can give my final thoughts. You're in the hot the seat. In the final thought zone. Bum, 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 bum. So my so final thoughts fun. were again, yeah. I overall I liked the movie. I thought it was good. I did miss the Michael Myers popping up in there, so I might have to watch it again just to see that. Um, I liked uh, I liked the departure from it all. I uh, thought the robots were crazy, but again, cool at the same time. And um, you know, I oh the one point I wanted to make was the the guy. Doctor, or the the main guy, Mister, uh, what's his name? I want to say Doctor Dan Chalice. No, not Dr. that Dan. guy. The, the main, the main bad guy, the guy. Cochran. Who, Cochran. 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 Best actor in the movie by far. Thought he blew it away. Thought, uh, he, he did this he, little moment where he was. Uh, so they're watching them out in the parking lot, and he like laughs because he's like, I don't know those crazy agents. And as soon as like the guy he's standing next to looks away, he goes yeah for a second yes. and i was like yes. that's the most effective fucking acting in the whole movie sorry i didn't mean so to rip by you far out. yeah that's so to me that would be my final thought like he blew it away for me i thought like he really tied considering he was like the main central bad guy and he kind of tied in that rv family and everything else into like the whole thing if it wasn't for him and him able to like really bring it home i think it would like a lot of the kind of the parts might not have fitted so uh, i thought cochran was like by far my favorite character and uh, I actually was kind of sad when he went out because I was like, I thought that could have been a cool, like, you know, maybe way to bring him back, or maybe he's like Michael Myers y kind of guy, but who knows? But I thought Imagine that would have been cool. Michael Myers, yeah, okay. I thought so he was a good bad guy. I thought he was a, like, he was killing he, kids. That's evil as evil as hell. Yeah. So yeah. I thought that he was a good bad guy. Yeah, so, Mark, we do a thing, we do the thing at the end of each of these segments that is called good. But could have been better, and it sounds like you gave us a good, good almost. Well, <laughs> exactly. been... What went well, even better? Yeah, uh, could have been better. Was uh, like again, just explaining what the relevance had to the robots. <laughs> just Mark wanted They're... more robots. No, I just I wanted to know why. Like he's like a toy like, manufacturer. How are they robotic? So... <laughs> Did somebody make them? Or I think that the, I, thing the only the... tie-in I could get was that he was a toy manufacturer, well, the... so he made giant man. Remember toy. how he was like he had that old lady <laughs> when the when Dan is skulking around, he find he thinks it's an old lady, but then it turns out to be like an ancient yeah. seventeen hundred or eighteen seventies animatronic that he loved. I think he was trying to like recreate. I think those. from now on <laughs> we're gonna call every robot ever. Robotic man toys. Mark, that's what you said. <laughs> Does he make you robotic man toys? Or robotic, robotic sex toys? toys. <laughs> like, he's like, at one point he looks at them, he's like, they're very well behaved, aren't they? And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me? I, mean, I don't they know do... what to say. Is that like, the guy like sneezes and he's like, huh, convincing, aren't they? And you're like, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's like Westworld or like Fallout 4 where it's like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah realistic all right it. um mark very good answer uh you. Cameron, you're next buddy boy well thank you so i'm going to start off by saying that this stands alone from the rest of the franchise it's not bad in any way shape or form and i like the anthology idea but halloween 2 should have been something completely different from Halloween 1 for that to really be effective. Um, alternatively, yeah. the other idea I had was do the anthology, but just do it under a different name. So, for example, Grimoire of Horror or some shit like that. And let Halloween be its own thing with Mike and then still do your anthology or whatever. Um yeah, you'd yeah. be the season of the witch, a Halloween story. That would be that, that much works better. too. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. that's what they do for spinoffs now. If it's gonna like the fucking uh, the well, that's and, what I asked you guys. The Fast and the Furious one, better the Rock. But I told you I would elaborate on my closing. He did. He did. The pervert murderer. He only murders perverts. And is a pervert. It's I mean, he's also a pervert. Yeah, he's. Like, he's <laughs> it's like Dexter. It's like Dexter. <laughs> he's a serial killer who only kills ultimate perverts. But he's Sorry. a serial killer, so he's kind of a pervert. Uh, the Kaylin, score you... was a banger again, as usual. Cinematography, great. Um, 
I enjoyed the practical effects as always. And personally, I actually enjoyed non-happy endings and was pleasantly surprised with this one because I actually did forget about it. Um, so you know, for my Kaylin, what went I, well, write, I wrote at the end of my review, Kalen loves a good scream ending. Like he loves getting screamed out of the theater. I wrote it. It's right here. Should point it up to the camera. That looks like some fingers. Oh shit. Here. Where do you think you need to stand is? in front of it? You need to stand in front of it for it to work. Oh. Kaylin <laughs> will write screen. Put your hand behind it like love screams. No, the other side, at least okay. for my what I'm seeing. So my what went long. well. Um my 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 runner up is the practical effects. But what I really want to give it give a hats off to is the creativity, the fact that he had the balls to do this or whatever, right? Yeah. But that kind of ties uh, ties into my even better. So even better, um, my my runner up was not have them hook up so easy or at all. Like that, just I I didn't need that. My my main even better though was as I mentioned earlier, get rid of the the Halloween title. Don't have it be a subtitle to that main title. Let it be its own thing, and let people enjoy it for what it is without coming into it with a preconception or whatever. Um, so it's a watch, but if you're a completist like myself, it's a buy, and I give it trick or treating during March. Or making the audience, or sorry, or the audience expecting you to go right and you go left. Oh, I thought you were gonna say the audience who are children called the cops and they're coming for you and you need to run. You need to run down the streets. <laughs> also, MPAA twenty six eight fourteen. No movie title shout out. We get a little bit of uh, we get Halloween, but we don't get the full movie title shout out. Um. Well. I I I actually like really really enjoyed talking to you guys about this movie a lot. Um, I oh sorry dog dog is get get dog is here. Bring him on the cam. Well yeah come on get up here get up here get up. Uh, he's being dingo. So maybe the dingo ate your baby. Yeah, that's the really the main thing that I have issue with with this movie is that when i started watching it a dingo ate my baby no i'm just kidding but i do think that this is the best halloween maybe question mark i don't know question. like like i like jason i don't particularly love the first one and i don't because i don't like the first one i don't really like the second one but I love this one. Like this one is fucking great. I love that there's like a weird motel with a bunch of people that just show up. I love that there's like an old man who's like, "Okay, well I'm Irish and I fucking have an Irish town." You're like, "What the fuck do you mean you have an Irish town?" And then he's got a bunch of old shamrocks in the wilderness. It's it's good. It's. It's actually amazing, I think. It's maybe the best Halloween movie that has ever been made. Um, I don't know if you've seen the uh, the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. They also suck. Like, they are not as good as this. This movie is way better than even those. Like, this movie is fucking... This movie rules. This movie rules, and... I don't think it rules because of old man being like, oh, let's have kissy <laughs> time. I don't like that. But I do like that he's the winner. And like one of the things that we, I think we can all agree on in terms of um, John Carpenter movies is that he almost always puts a like a, an old white man as the lead. And that's something that, like, you know, it sucks, but it's old. It's an old idea. An old white man being the lead is an old idea. And, like, we can't. It's a personal bias. 
yeah we've got our we've got our uh uh our, our big troubles in little china's and we've got our fucking the things and stuff but like these are the kind of movies that we're gonna have to watch and be like remember when white men were allowed to be in movies <laughs> like that's kind of like what this is um which <laughs> also kind of sucks like that also sucks but i like it So that's the end of the movie, I think. What what about our good friend Jason here? Jason did it. Or actually you didn't you didn't do your what if your what your what ifs yet. Oh was that your final thought? Because that's I don't that was just I was that your final thought? (laughs) Uh yeah, it was my final thought. Oh, okay. And if uh, if you don't want me to do one this week, that's cool too. Well, I have to do my best of or whatever. The thing that I liked the most in the movie was the family, the other family. They get the RV lost. family. Yeah, I like them the best. The thing that I think could have been better was more of them, and not okay. not him being involved or anyone being involved. Like just show them for a bit. Like I want to see them getting fucked up. You know, like. They're, like the kid is like, ah! like he, his head gets shrunken down and he like kills his parents or something right that would have been cool if, if he was a little more of a shit disturber then him getting like killed or whatever would have been a little bit better of a payoff yeah yeah i gotta let the dog out i'll be right back does that mean jason should go <laughs> yes yes no we, we sit here silently we the, gotta wait <laughs> Uh, what went well is the mystery element. This this movie was not a horror; it was a mystery. It was a mystery with horror elements. It was a, that's the John Carpenterness of the whole fucking uh, dynamic. <clears throat> and what, uh, in even better, it really needed more graphic kills. The only real graphic kill was like the blood spurt when he pulled his head off. I wanted to see the drill go into a fake head. Mm-hmm. the lead up to that drill and i'm not like a freak you know like i don't need to see the most gory <laughs> shit no i think that everybody going eh, was pretty good we all agree no i wanted to see it i wanted to, well, see, Jason it. Wanted to see it but we all are like no we didn't need to see it. maybe i'm a freak her yeah. le- her leg like was pretty good um for that part so i they I just think that it was a it was a miss it was a John Carpenter mystery that had a freaky sort of element to it. I agree with what you guys were saying. Where this movie could have just been called "From the Makers of the Halloween Series comes mm-hmm. a new vision of terror, season of the witch," and that's all you need. Just put I John like Carpenter's it. fucking name on it. Who cares? Yeah. Um, and if okay. like I do agree with you, Kalen, the um, anthology should have started at movie two. That said movie one and two are one movie in my opinion it's one long right. sequence right so that's yeah. the first anthology then you do this maybe you make a sequel to this that takes place continuity wise like right after or you just do some other shit as long as it happens on halloween like imagine next week we were talking about the anthology return of the halloween for return of the witch yeah it's like the that would witch. be incredible yeah um, for my final thoughts, um, so I went into this movie expecting a terrible movie, and I was saying at the top of the show, I've seen people talk about this in the same breath as a troll too, like it's so bad it's good, but I think that uh, the issue with this is it's a movie with Halloween in the name with no Michael Myers, which we talked about all mm. through the show. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, it makes me want the anthology movies they had planned for this. Um, and this one is uh, fully a John Carpenter movie, despite him only having a producer credit. I liked it a lot, and it was amplified by watching it with my pal Steve. We did watch it together, and it was better, yeah. And it I was, think... I'll say it was way better watching with Jason than if I was to watch it with I was watching it, track like, wise? the first 20... That's, yeah. I think I watched like 40 minutes by myself. We watched, we watched like 30, 30, 28 or 30 minutes on our own. And then we. And then when Jason joined, I was like, oh, wow. This movie all of a sudden is really. It's fun. going by a lot faster. Yeah. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and I think, Kaylin, let's off, off camera talk about like doing this more, more frequently where we just get into a chat and, and watch the movie together because I'm kind of sold on it now. Yeah. Um, 
the, the setting and the plot were weird, uh, which I love. I love weird stuff. I'm a freak, apparently, according to my wanting to see the girl get the drill of the head. Um, yeah, I also have a list of friends, and every single one of my friends put freak next <laughs> on the list. Uh, weird. The plot's weird and good, <laughs> uh, and there were some great twists. I like the little. I like movies with little nonsensical twists, especially in like B horror movie kind of context, because it doesn't yeah. matter. This isn't like this is a one and done movie, and it's a John Carpenter adjacent thing that he clearly had his dirty. It's dirty John Carpenter, dirty claws pumpkin it. covered He's claws got that all over. Fucking nasty boy. He rubbed his beard in there and shit. <laughs> He's like dandruff. Um, I'm actually going to give this a 3.5 out of five, which I think is like a pretty like high rating considering if you look at. I think at... you gave it way higher than the other Halloweens, did you not? This I think guy I gave them both a three. This guy <laughs> hates the Halloween. The I don't concept. like. But I, I like Halloween that season of the witch. I don't like Michael Myers that much. I find him a more to be a more boring Jason. At least Jason yeah. does some shit like in part three Unless where he's just like flipping Durant. a barn. Durant loves Michael Myers. He's like, this guy, he's the real murderer. And I'm like, <laughs> what about Jason? He's like, Jason kind of sucks. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Those movies are so weird. I like weird. Um, I also give this, okay. I give this a reference to Halloween inside a Halloween movie about <laughs> Halloween with no continuity to Halloween, but I like this better. <laughs> I, I like that. I, like that. I might just like attach my name to that and people will love it. And they'll be like, Steve's dirty pumpkin covered <laughs> claws are all over this review. Um, should we give it to Mark or should we give it to Kaylin for the end of the line? The end line. Well, you since... got to do the. You got to do the thing. Well, si well, since Steve can't do it. No, wait. Did you guys all do yours already? We've all. Yeah. We're done. No. Steve, have you been drinking all day? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not even like a little bit. Okay. Well, I was there, so. Um. All right. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's get the fuck out of here. But I do think that there's something to be said about anthology movies and we don't really give them enough appreciation. Um, I, I love them. And I, I also yeah. hate them at the same time. Like some of them are, are bullshit. I like some, TV like, anthology. So much better, better. And this yeah. is an example of John Carpenter, a person who is supremely charged for making horror. He could have been like a, like a Jordan Peterson or like a, what's his you know, name jordan peele jordan peterson is very different context. sorry jordan Pe he's like um, you what? know a man is not a man anymore and I, you know the patriarchy is here to tell what's the other guy jordan peele no the other guy the guy who's like the old man mark dun, 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 dun. yeah dun, 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 dun. mark you'll know it Oh, I... he's fat. He's old. He's British. He made Psycho. Oh, oh I don't know who that. Oh, is. Hitchcock. Yeah, Hitchcock. Yes. Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, he is kind of a tell stories that are all non-connected. Carpenter's whole thing is he didn't ever want to make sequels, right? So that's kind of well, that's what Hitchcock Hitchcockian. Yeah. Can all the movies we did on your uh, uh, John uh, John Carpenter month? Or no, wait, those were Stevens Kings. Never mind. No, no, you did a John Carpenter month too. Can those all just be anthology part of the anthology? Kinda. Uh, no, no, I, they, they're little. I, I, I did. I did movies that were based on Stephen King books. Didn't you also do a John Carpenter month though the year before? No, we did January. No. Both years were John. Oh Car right, John January Carpenter was month. John Carpenter. Yeah, John, yeah, John presents. And I, I specifically didn't choose movies that were directed by him because we had already done the month. So I was like, if we want to have him later, like we can. Like I didn't, I didn't pick. You know, I could have done Christine or some shit or like, you know, anything. Um. Yeah, tracks. Tell the tell the viewers what they want to hear, Steve. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate this episode so much. I love you guys so much. You guys are the best, Mark. Thank you thank very you. much, Mark, for coming on. And yeah, uh, as we're having me back anytime. 
Yeah, you can definitely come back anytime, and uh, we really appreciate you taking your time to uh, come and just talk about movies with a bunch of fucking whack jobs. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. I I think that this is like a weird thing where we're getting like a little tiny tidbit, a taste of John Carpenter outside the month, and it's nice. It's nice to see it again. You know, you're like, it's him. He's here. He definitely like staged this shot. He knows how to stage a shot. He was on set. He had to have at least been on set. And also in the writer's room and also in the music room and also (laughs) did the primary photography and the blocking and also uh, also said do this and do that and also all of it. And I thought I was like when's he gonna be done? But he got it. Yeah, you got all of them. Um, I love you guys. Tell them who we are, Steve. I'm trying to but you keep interrupting me. Uh, yeah I am Steven you are Jason you are Kalen isn't that how it works and what about our guest oh and Mark Mark's here too Mark and uh, here's how it's supposed to go Mark and if you want to if you want to if you want to if you want to play along at home feel free but we do a little thing where I go and for Steven and for Kalen and for our guest Mark I'm Jason and, and for, and for, for, Jason, for Steven, oh my bad. You're, you go it. You you do it. Go ahead. And for Jason, for Kalen, and for Mark, Mark, I love you. I'm sorry about this. I'm Steven. <laughs> Mark, I just met you. But for our good uh, friend Mark, thank you for joining. And you. my fellow hosts, Steven and Jason, I'm Kellen. Okay. And we just gotta ask you one thing. We have thing. to ask you one question. Oh, uh, hey, have you guys seen this one? Hey, did you see this one? Hey, hey did you have see you this, seen one? this one? <laughs> <laughs> can we uh, get a robotic arm and like kind of like an arm on its own just kind of come out? Is, can, you, can you edit an arm to like pull this whole fourth all in? No. 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 I can't. Can I get a can I get a little can I get a little slap on the butt? I can do can that. I love that. I'll make it hard to you sick. T O O. I don't know how to do the other. <laughs>